from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2018. Three days of live coverage, we're kicking off day two on the right set. Michael Dell himself is talking, but I'm even more excited because when we get to talk to the users here, that's what we love doing, talking peers, talking to their peers. I'm Stu Miniman. My guest host for this segment is Yu Piskar, who's actually a user himself. And joining me, first time on the program, is PJ Romero, who's the principal IT engineer at yes, Turnitin out of Oakland. Out of Oakland? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right, so uh, PJ, first of all, your fourth year uh, at, at VMworld. Yep. Give us kind of your initial impressions and uh, you know, what, what brings you back to VMworld? Uh, VMworld, just getting re up in my education, so I'm learning more stuff, seeing what's new on the horizon, so it's get implemented in my, my situation. All right, we talk about learning more stuff. Tell us about Turn It In. So uh, <laughs> explain what this is, and uh, you know, I think it'll resonate with uh, a lot of our audience. Right, Turn It In is plagiarism detection software. <laughs> so we're probably in most major universities throughout the world. Uh, really big in Europe and here in the major universities. Okay, and so we are also in high school. High school down. Okay, yeah, I was Good. wondering about it. My, my daughter actually starts high school tomorrow, <laughs> so uh, uh, make sure she understands yep. uh, that, you know, the, 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 the serious stuff. I mean, talk about education. Uh, I mean, heck, in this community, when you talk about certification, people are always worried about, you know, tests getting exactly. out and things like that. So exactly. we take education seriously exactly. as a community as we should. And your role at the company. My role, I'm the principal IT engineer, so basically I architect the corporate infrastructure. Um, aside from the turn in papers, so I manage the uh, global infrastructure. Okay. So, before we get into you know kind of the infrastructure itself, uh -huh. the business itself, how long has it been around? How long have you been in there? And uh, what is the kind of you know mobile, web, digital transformation impact your business? Oh, so wow, everything's mobile now. Everything's on the web. Uh, we've migrated out there. Uh, we've moved out to the cloud and um, how it's migrated us. So Turnaround's been around for about 20 years. Uh, we just uploaded our billionth paper uh, a few weeks ago. So we have a, about nine petabytes worth of data to pull from. Oh wow. Um, so and so you can imagine how we're getting that from our data centers into the cloud and with nine petabytes, it's been the challenge. So uh, recently we virtualized on VMware and to make that transition, we, we had rows and rows of servers and moved them out, virtualized. So, so nine terabytes, that's, that's a lot of data. Petabytes. Uh, petabytes even. Petabytes, yeah. So tell me, how does that work from a tech perspective? What are you, you, know, what are you running? What, what's that tech stack look like? Well, Turnitin is it's actually a homegrown infrastructure from the, from the ground for the storage. So it's highly available, it's highly redundant. Uh, we have multiple data centers and new with the GDPR uh, requirements. Now we have data centers in Europe and we're moving all over the country. We're, we're looking at uh, um, um, EMA, uh, APAC, and then uh, um, South America. <laughs> we'll get it out there somewhere. So you, you're running your own data centers, I yes. presume? Yes, yes, we're running our own data centers. What's, what's that mean for your hybrid cloud strategy? How much is in, in your data center? What are you considering to move to the cloud? How does that impact your business? So right now we're probably 75%, 25%, and you know with the cloud being elastic as it is, as term papers come up, we're spinning them, spinning them up. You know, so we're moving. Great, okay. So. You're virtu virtualized, or uh, do you know what percentage of your applications are virtualized? And maybe walk us through a little bit about uh, you know, the stacks that you have, uh, both uh, you know, on-premises as well as who you use for a public cloud. Oh, so we're using AWS, and we're also, I think we use uh, some Google stuff in Azure for some of the development. Um, so we're using all of them, basically, to make sure we're, we're fluid that way. Um, we also do uh, all the applications, all the web servers are virtualized and put up in the cloud, and then, but the main, Guts of it is still on premise. Okay, and, and, and what's that stack look like uh, on premises? Who, who are you using today? Uh, as far as? Like your, your, your whole infrastructure stack. Oh, the infrastructure has yeah. been super micro. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, but so, but it, you're using like an HCI solution? Uh, the corporate is. Okay. The corporate, yeah, I manage the corporate infrastructure. Right. Yeah, we use the HCI solution. So, what, so who's I, are you using? Yeah, so I'm using Nutanix. Okay. Yeah. But Great, so <laughs> why, why don't you <laughs> tell us a little bit about how you got to Nutanix, what apps you use that for, what apps you don't use uh, that for, maybe uh, help yeah, tease yeah, that out course. a little for us. So, uh, I have, um, 
the corporate infrastructure started out when I got there three years ago, uh, I had server sprawl. I had all physical servers, they weren't virtualizing yet, and I got in there and was like, why not? So I did a small POC with a couple of servers and a, and a NAS uh, that I built, homemade, and put VMware on it and said, look, this stuff works great, I can move stuff back, I can kill this box, and, and they were like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then I got a business intelligence project for the financial services. So they were doing some really high-end modeling based on uh, Oracle database and needed something redundant, powerful, and fast to deploy. Well, that was the problem. It was going to take six weeks to get servers in, get them configured, stacked. I got Nutanix in within two weeks. So, got Nutanix in there. I think I spent more time convincing them that this is really, it's a 2U box, I'm going to stick all our stuff in there. Uh, we started out with the three node unit and got VMware on there to show them what I was doing. Yeah. And then uh, we deployed our, our Oracle stack in no time. So tell a little about the, the cost model behind it. Has it changed the way, you know, using HCI, has it changed the way you do business? Has it made it easier, cheaper, faster? It's made it cheaper and faster for me, easier, and I don't say the easy part too much because then they wonder what I'm doing. But it's really easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it, that's interesting. When you talk about you've had homegrown stuff before yeah. versus now, um, you know, I, I've talked to some Nutanix customers. They say like, "Oh, hey, you know, I got my nights and weekends back. Yeah, I, I don't have to worry about so many of the other pieces." Maybe talk a little bit about that dynamic. Did you have any change in personnel or who manages what after? Or is it is it you? Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I'm it. And but what is that with the ability to put Nutanix in there and ease of use? Uh, I give them access to the dashboards and show them how things work. It's been really simple, especially for some of my newer guys and younger sysadmins who don't understand virtualization. It's still kind of magic for everybody. Uh, but now it's they got one dashboard. Greenheart means good. Everything else, we look at it. You know, and so, so you're saying you're the wizard now. Like, I'm the wizard. You, you, pay no attention behind <laughs> the curtain. It got really easy, but uh, I, I'll, I'll just keep that behind so I, c I can do more stuff and I'll just you know, yeah. be the superhero, exactly. right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Made my monitoring easy for them and my guys love it. They so really love tell it. A, tell a little bit about how you're using Nutanix, right? So Nutanix started out as a virtualization, pure HGI company, but they've broadened their portfolio, right? So tell us a little bit about how you're using the Nutanix solution inside of your data centers. Right, so originally I went to Nutanix with the virtualization product or the financial product, I was able to get a fourth node. So I was able to use their analytics in there and say, hey, we're going to run out of space. So I'm running 47 machines on four nodes and I still have high redundancy, but I had no backups. So like, what do we do? So I got a second box, I put it in one of my other data centers and I use that for replication in the back. And now with the with the Psi coming out, I'm going to start pushing that up to the cloud and start moving my single data center toothpick, as it were. It's going to be in the cloud to click the. Yeah, and you mentioned Oracle's. Uh, the, I think the application that catalyzed mm -hmm. this, all certified, didn't have any issues, no things issues. like that. That, that, that's awesome. It was I mean, great. It was, they were, they were those of us in the virtualization community, I mean, how many years did we spend with just virtualizing Oracle, let alone every new platform? Exactly. You know, it's challenging, so it, it, your, your peers, all clear, oh, they don't yeah. have to worry about yep, it, right? They love it, they love it. They, they can't believe that I got it all in the 2U box. <laughs> I like to take the picture of it and say, here's their stuff. That I don't need so this simple. big stack, I just need the little box. <laughs> So, yeah. so basically your whole operational model changed, I'm guessing. You're not spending as much time anymore on operational issues. No, it's more of architecture now. Is to start moving, like I said, we we'll start moving the cloud. I'm getting away from uh, uh, virtualizing more of the applications that we use. We just use basic Active Directory and DNS and that stuff. That's all fine, but I'm going to start moving it so it push to the button, it'll be in the cloud, and I can literally lose my data center. Yeah. So. Yeah, to talk a little bit about you know, the Xi, you know, we've heard a lot, the, the vision, so what, what's the roadmap for you, you to kind of embrace, adopt that, what, what's interesting to you about for it? For me, I'm going to take that financial stack and really moving it right now in the tip, it's re-IP, it's, re, it's, re, it's a lot of back-end work. With the Xi, it should be a click, and I mean, I've seen the database, so we're talking right now to get that done, and it should be a click of the button, and, and it's going to spin me up in AWS. So that's where I'm going next with my next project. That looks pretty cool. Okay, uh, the, the rest of your applications, are, will you expand your Nutanix environment or is this something to help you deal with that hybrid cloud environment? Yeah, Maybe what's the future look like? If I have my way, as I age out my remote sites, we'll be putting more Nutanix out there and then I can do more three to one backups. And that frees up 
even more time to be spending on you know future architecture yep, exactly new stuff, instead of just the operational stuff. Yep, I'm making it so we can we can lose any leg and we're going to be fine. Yeah. So one of the things everybody's poking at at this show is that whole multi-cloud environment. Mm -hmm. um, we said I can make my data center kind of simple today, yeah. but multi-cloud. Most people, at least I talk to, it's, it's not simple. Cloud's a little bit complex. It's, it's not just swipe a credit card anymore. Managing between multiple environments, depending on how many clouds you have. What are you seeing today? What would you like to see get even better uh, over, over time? Uh, I like to see where, where Nutanix is going, really, with the single environment. I want it to be, I want to go one spot. And right now, I'm going to one spot for my virtualization and all my on-prem stuff. But as I move up to the cloud and spin stuff up, I want to go to the same spot. I don't want to have to think about it so much, and, and that's simple is good for me. You know, I'm big in the KISS system. <laughs> absolutely, keep it simple. Yeah, that's Engineering right. design, <laughs> a, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so I, I imagine your role is changing as well, right? It is becoming simpler. You get to spend more time on you know, new projects. How is your role changing as an, an IT engineer? Uh, I'm getting to think more. You know, I'm not reactive anymore at all. When I got there, it was very reactive environment, and now it's more on design and how we can make sure we can tighten up securities. Uh, we went through a whole bunch of new SOC, SOC audits, and uh, it's made it simple. So it's made it simple for me. So we're all in compliance now with the, with the, on the physical hardware and security, and now some of the other touches I'm able to think about and, and get those implemented. So. Outside of the Nutanix stuff, uh, at VMworld, what kind of things are you digging into, learning, anything excite you that you either heard from your peers or announcements or sessions you've been uh, in? VDI is still exciting to me, okay. so I'm still looking at those projects, and I have just enough space to do a POC on my stuff, so I'm trying to, I'm talking to management about that. Um, as soon as I can show them they can do anything from a web browser, I'd like to give them Chromebooks and say, have a nice day, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it, it's funny you say that because most people think of the HCI space and like, oh, well you start with VDI, yeah. and now you're like, oh, well now I've, I've got some spare capacity, I'm guessing, or you know, I, I can put environment, manage it. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, just some of the, the dynamics inside the company it sounds like are some of the bigger challenges to, yeah. for that. Yeah. Always for VDI has been a challenge. Yeah, it's always yeah. a challenge. But you know, so far everything I've said has worked for them, so I've got a I've got a good trust base. Well, P P D Romero, really appreciate you uh, talking about uh, turn it in, um, no plagiarism at this show, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll check. <laughs> All right. Well, P D Romero, turn it in, really appreciate you joining us. For you Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman, lots more coverage, wall to wall here at VMworld 2018. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.